Good evening, Washington, D.C. It is tonight with a very heavy heart that I must pay honor and tribute to one of the greats that left us today. His name is Nelson Mandela, affectionately known as Madiba. That man had an impact on the world and he had a profound personal impact on me. I was ever so blessed to spend three days with him, three days of real quality time. He changed my life forever, for the better. As a very light-skinned African-American, I've seen racism in its rawest forms and did not know that when I traveled to South Africa, I had some bitterness and maintained and retained some hostilities. Once I met Nelson Mandela and talked to him about his time in that hell hole, his time of being locked up for fighting for that radical concept called equality. Only that was his transgression. And they took away 27 years of his life and he came out without a trace of bitterness. That was a mirror that I looked into and I saw that I must release whatever I had. On the third day in South Africa at his home over dinner, I felt that gorilla lift from me and his was the example that I used to become a better person. Thank you, Madiba. Rest in peace. We love you. All right, all right. Live on WHUT Howard University Television, a special broadcast of The Rock Newman Show. Um, I know no better time or no better place, I don't, Yeah. for you to announce whether or not you're going to run for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you all see how he eased that one right in there? The Rock Newman Show. Take it away. Again, Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, welcome to The Rock Newman Show. We broadcast here on WHUT Channel 32, which is an affiliate. It's a station of Howard University. Uh, it's a Howard University television station. If you may not have ever heard me say, let me repeat it again. I think that Howard University is singularly the most important institution of higher learning in the world. I'm happy to be broadcasting on Channel 32, WHUT. So as we get started tonight, let me reveal a secret. I had a speech prepared and a grand entrance for our guest. I mean, it came with drum roll and all the rest, and she was going to be scheduled to walk from the back of the house to the front of the house in this sold out studio, jam packed to the hills. But she said, no, nah, I don't necessarily need that. I'd like to just be sitting there when the interview starts. My guest tonight is someone who I was going to say was the sister of the soil of Washington, D.C. Someone who has lived such an extraordinary life, such an exemplary life with class, with dignity, with professionalism, with charisma, with accomplishment in such a way that perhaps the number one watch TV show on the planet is formed after her life. It is a sister of the DC soil. Let me please welcome and thank and say that I am honored to have Judy Smith. Thank you. Thank you so Pleasure much for thank coming. You. Thank you so very much for coming. Okay, let me, let, me ask, let, me, let me ask you first, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to embarrass you. I'll put you on the spot. Okay, I'm in a hot We had a game. grand entrance plan for you, and you didn't really want that. I think that says something about who Judy Smith is. Tell me why you didn't want it. It's not my thing. 
um, you know, I, um, it's just not who I am as a, as, as a person. Uh, I am so happy, happy to be here. I love Washington. And just, it's always good to be home. Okay. So, uh, you know. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't need people to be drumming and standing up. I'm just thankful to be here. Let me tell you something. Yes. I did walk through the audience. Yes. And amongst the audience. Yes. And there's a rumor circulating that is scandalous. Oh, no. What's that? And I need to clear it up. Okay. I think I know the answer. Didn't but until sleep with I, the president. Well, here's what I'm going to okay. ask you. I, right. I, I, right. want, I want to get something out the way up front. Okay, good, good. There was a president yes. who looked into a camera yes. and said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Now, nobody knows what president that could be. Do so, we? my question is, Yes. I mean, no, what I'd like for you to do is look into the camera. Yes. And confirm or deny. Or deny. That you did not have sexual relations with that woman's husband. It's, well, let me confirm everything. I can. Oh, uh, my God. So bad. So bad, is he? <clears throat> Look, because that's the, the rumor. They, th that this they is a, started. This Who is a started? largely female audience uh, out here tonight. Now. I'm put my glasses now, I don't mean on. to be politically hand. incorrect. Who, who said that? But there's that? some gossip going on out there. <laughs> no, look. I mean, here's the beautiful thing about the the show. I think that Shonda Rhimes has done this amazing job at dramatizing it for television. And so, quite often, yes, one of the first questions I get is. Did I have sex with the president? Where are you knocking boots with the president? <laughs> they don't use the acid like that, but it's the same. Yeah, no. Okay. And then we go to, well, just any president. You know, they go Bush 1, Bush 2, Clinton, Carter. So, no, across the board, no. Uh-huh. No. Okay, you heard it here. If you never heard it anywhere else, heard, heard it, it on the first. Right. We got that part cleared up. Yes. Let's talk about Judy Smith. Oh, all righty. I said you're a sister of the soil. I want to go back. Yes. Like. Oh, we're back. going way back. All yeah. right. What all hospital right. were you born in, Washington? Oh my God, uh, Providence. I think Providence. Northeast. Hospital. Northeast. Northeast Washington yes. D.C. Yeah, Providence. Yeah, right. Providence. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Now, um, you have a memory. I'd like to tap into. Okay. What was your earliest memory as a child? Oh God! Uh, about what? What I wanted to be? Whatever. Or? What? Whatever your first memory was. I remember an ambulance coming to my dad, coming to pick my dad up, and I was yeah. really upset. Yeah. And I was cussing, and I didn't even know cuss words. Right. But that was my first memory. Oh what, God! What's That's your a tough first? one. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I will say this: that um, I, I grew up here in, in Northeast Washington, mm -hmm. and um, went to a Catholic elementary school. Which one? Uh, St. Francis de Sales, okay. right in Northeast. Okay. And I went to uh, Notre Dame Academy, mm -hmm. uh, right here on North Capitol and K. Mm -hmm. All and, DC. Yeah, all DC. And uh, I remember thinking that when I got older that I would never wear plaid because, <laughs> true, honestly, God, because in elementary, I think we were like burgundy or green plaid. Mm. Then when I went to high school, we stepped up to blue plaid. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's ever seen me in anything plaid. <laughs> elementary uh, school, Catholic school? All Catholic, yeah. High school, Catholic school? Yes, yeah. Is it true what they say about Catholic school girls? Uh, I don't know. I can just say that I had a great time in high school. <laughs> I had a great time. I loved high school. You know why? <clears throat> For me, going to an all-girls high school was great mm. because I got a chance to really develop good relationships, but it gives you room to, I think, really become who you are and you begin to grow. Mm -hmm. Now, it was an extra added benefit, of course, because right next to, and it's still here, right next to Notre Dame Academy is mm -hmm. Gonzaga. Yeah. So we had the all boys mm -hmm. school there. Mm -hmm. So there was a little hallway uh -huh. that connected the two schools. Uh -huh. And so, you know, we would just kind of happen to meet in that hallway. And right before we entered that hallway, all the women um, in, at Notre Dame would so nicely, very discreetly, of course, jack up their uniform skirts. Yeah. Which I, I'm sure that, that the girls still do now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, so we would, we would do that. But high school was great I hadn't planned to ask this, but since you're talking about that hallway, how old were you when you first had your first real kiss? Oh, my God. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't remember. Think back. 
I don't was remember. it in one of those hallways? <laughs> that, that was a good answer, wasn't it? Uh, okay, let me be like I'm in a hearing on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. I can't recall. <laughs> Real expertise. Can't recall. <laughs> um, so your mom and dad. Yes. What kind of influence? What were what, what were what kind of jobs did they have? Mm -hmm. did, did they put a big emphasis on education? Where did you sort of get what we're going to talk about later about this book? Yes. Where yes. did you? I'm, I'm going to just use this word right now. It's prominently here in the book. Your ambition. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I think for me, my I remember President Bush asked me this, and we were talking about people that really influence your life and who who the most important people were. Yeah. And for me, it has been my parents. Mm -hmm. My parents were very hard workers. My mom was a secretary during the day and at night she would clean office buildings mm -hmm. and I remember one time uh, she asked me to come with her to clean to clean the office building I mm -hmm. said well why do I have to go with you nobody else at school has to clean toilet tonight mm -hmm. needless to say that was the last time I ever said that <laughs> and um, and you know my dad drove a uh, truck uh, during the day Mm -hmm. And then at night he drove a cab. So any cab driver anywhere in this country that has picked me up, mm -hmm. I always overtip. Fare can be five dollars and I'll give you twenty. Mm -hmm. Because really that's how all of us got through school mm -hmm. was because my dad worked and, and my mom two jobs. So for me the kind of thing that when I'm speaking to young people in particular that I talk about is that I think that somehow we have lost the value of hard work. Yeah. And there's no shortcuts to that. It's it's just hard work. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. let's uh so your 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 parents uh, two parent household. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously powerful strong influence. Mm -hmm. Now what about outside of that? Either in the community or was there anyone that you saw on TV or in magazines or whatever that had a great influence on you? Ooh, that's another tough one. I, I can't say on TV, honestly, because mm -hmm. I didn't watch that much TV mm -hmm. um, growing up. I, I will say, um, because today is his passing and, and we, were, we were talking about it, um, I think people like, and there's no other person like Nelson Mandela, somebody who um, not only was strong enough to talk about what he believed, but stood up for it. Yeah. And I think that most people don't do that. We sort of all talk about values and ethics and the things that we stand for, it's important. But it's this is old phrase that when the rubber meets the road, yeah. that not that many people do that. And someone like that, oh, From the dock, amazing. from the dock, let's stay with yeah. Madiba for a moment. Yeah. From the dock, when he was being sentenced mm -hmm. for fighting, as I said, for that radical concept yeah. called equality. He said, I have been fighting for against white domination. Mm -hmm. I have been fighting against black domination. I have fighting, been fighting for a free and democratic South Africa. It is something that I live to do, but it is also something that I am willing to die for. Yeah. And so when you talk about the rubber meeting the road, he oh. passed today. Uh, yeah. It, just no greater honor in my lifetime yeah. than having spent time with him. Oh, it, it's a it was a blessing. That's um are are you an only child? Oh no, it's five of us. Yeah. Are you in the middle? I'm not, second to the youngest. Second to the you youngest. You know, yeah. I would have thought if I just would have you know, uh, said somebody get the crystal ball, yes. you'd have you you'd have had two siblings and you would have been in the middle because you are a problem solver. <laughs> and I hear true, that true. the middle child is often the problem, uh, is the problem right, solver. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I, I start doing it at a very young age. I, when I was writing this book, um, a buddy of mine called, and I've known, uh, her name is Michelle, and she's a very really good friend of mine. I've known her since I was two, two, two years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, she called up and she said, oh, you know, you wanna go out? And I said, no, I said, I don't have time. I said, the, editors on me and they want me to write about how I got started. Mm -hmm. You know, how did I get started in crisis? And I said, I can't think. And she said, oh, I can tell you. And I said, when? She said, seven years old, back alley. 
you navigated major dodgeball fight. Uh, <laughs> Ten years old, you had us all protesting in front of City Hall because they were cutting funds for the after school program. And uh, she said, you've been doing it all your life. And you just hadn't, hadn't realized. When it. I started promoting on social media yeah. that you were going to be on the show today, one of your um, playground mates yes. called and said, she's, I mean, uh, texted me oh, and, she said, and said, she's been, said she's been, I'd have to go back and take a okay, look. Yeah. But I, I want to show it to you before okay. you leave here this right. evening. She good. said she's been solving problems since she was eight years old. Yeah. 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 Okay, so look, so you're, you're, you're Catholic again, elementary school, high school, and you first go off to Boston University. Yes. yes. Tell me about that, coming out of Washington, D.C., going to Boston. Were you afraid? Were you, t t tell I us about how you but felt. But my parents were. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. And when I went to Boston, I decided to go to Boston University because it has a reputation of one of the most top communication schools in the country. And actually, I was uh, so excited, and uh, I wish both my parents were here, because I went back this last um, graduation. I was the graduation speaker for my for my school, so mm -hmm. that was that was amazing. Um, but no, you know, it was the height of racial tension there yeah. in in Boston, and it was um, it was a very very difficult difficult time. But I have always been about hard work, and so what I always try to focus on is. What's the objective? What did I come here to do? And that was to get a good education. Well, you know, I was, I, in the, I was in the middle of Boston uh -huh. in 1972. Yeah. And I had a very dark-skinned girlfriend at uh -huh. the time. Yeah. And so the people that saw me in this diner, right. they thought that I was this white guy yeah. that was had some jungle fever before right. Wesley Snipes and his crew had right. jungle fever. <laughs> did they have some conversation with you about that? Some real uh, ugly, I'm some sure, real right. ugly conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. meet any kind of uh, animosity like that? Well, I mean, it was everywhere. You couldn't, you know, you, you couldn't go certain places. You had to be very, very careful about where you went and, and, you know, really make sure that you were with a group of people. Take so, us yeah. back to that. How did that make you feel? Um, not, you know, not safe, certainly. Not, mm -hmm. uh, not safe. And, you know, you're just very conscious of it. But, but I think um, growing up, and, and I say this, that there is, uh, for me, a certain strength in not only being a woman, but being an African-American woman. Um, what do you great. mean by that? Well, I think there is a certain amount of power that I don't think that, that, that people sometimes see, that there's power in being who you are. Um, I was uh, talking to a CEO of a corporation, and one of the things that he said was they interview a lot of young people. And he said that he often sees the young people coming in trying to present an image of something that they are not or trying to be somebody that they're not and trying so hard to, to fit in. And um, the way that I was raised and the way that I feel is that that is power in being yourself and, and who you are is enough. It's, it's, it should be more than enough. You know, we have uh, folks are tweeting us here and they tweeting oh, us somebody's at tweeting. WHUT TV. Um, and we have one. Oh, everybody's so high tech. Uh, you know what? It's so high tech, and I think I'm low tech because it hadn't come up on my screen. Oh, okay. So All let right. us so let us so let us keep going. Okay. What major milestones in your life do you attribute to your current success? Oh God. Um, I don't think there's just one. I think what has worked for me is consistent hard work and, and focus. When we do crisis, and I've been doing it for. Uh, 20 years. What I've I tried to do is really focus on each crisis and do a good job and, um, and, and do it well. Yeah. You, um, so you came out of Boston University. I yes. want to I I have this biography together. Okay. Here. When, all when right. we leave here, all I right. want people to know so who know everything. really is. I want to get all up in it. All right. So you graduate with a degree in communications. Yes. And then what? I uh, decided to go to law school. But I wasn't quite sure yet. And so someone actually told me that I argued well. And so I was crazy enough to think that that was a compliment. And they said, you ought to try law school. And I said, good idea. 
So I went right here to GW, another great school, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, got a paralegal certificate, and I said, okay, I kind of kind of like this law thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked during the day, and I went to law school at night, and one of those sort of type A personalities. What so job did you have during the day? Oh, God, tons, 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 tons. Um, I clerked at the U.S. Attorney's Office. I worked in bankruptcy court. It was great because I got a lot of different types of legal experience. So by the time I actually finished law school, I had a a good sense of, uh, of what I wanted to do. And that was, that was great, mm -hmm. that was great. And yeah. was it shortly after that period, after yeah. you got the degree, after you got your law degree, mm -hmm. that you started doing some business and working with the first Bush administration? Is that when? Well, you no, you know what, my first actually job in crisis was, some of you guys may not remember this, was the Iran-Contra investigation mm -hmm. when President Reagan was selling arms for hostages, mm -hmm. and um, I, that, was my, that was my first job right out of law school, believe it or not. And what did you do with that? Well, I was um, associate counsel, and so I got an opportunity to sort of merge the legal uh, background and mm -hmm. the communications background and uh, manage, the, uh, manage the media operation mm -hmm. for, uh, for that. Yeah. Um, the, was it, it was the George Bush administration that nominated Clarence Thomas mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. become a member of the Supreme Court. Right. Okay. That was 91? I'm guessing. Don't somewhere, know. Yeah. somewhere 20 some years ago. Uh -huh. Ooh, it's a long time ago. Yes. Now, what role did you play during the testimony and all of the drama surrounding mm -hmm. his appointment? Because there was lots of drama. There was high drama. Oh, yeah, I mean. There was this yeah. black man mm -hmm. accused of sexually harassing right. this black woman. I want to offer something. Yes. That I have come in my old age to understand I don't know what the hell women be thinking about. <laughs> and because y'all know stuff that you know that you know because uh -huh. you're a woman. Uh -huh. Well, there's a little bit of that that goes on with men. Oh, it is? That we Tell know some that. stuff what that stuff? we know because we men. What stuff? Like what? That Clarence Thomas was guilty of harassing Anita Hill. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't hold back. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> what was your role in that whole saga? When I was at the White House, uh, I served as President Bush's special assistant and deputy press secretary. So what I did at the White House, I mean, it was an amazing opportunity for Getting me. Getting kind of risky. I got a President well, Bush's special assistant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, you know, that's, that's the title. Okay. And it was great because I got a chance. I mean, look, I'm a girl from Northeast Washington. And to be able to work at the White House, something you had never anticipated or ever planned, and I got to travel all over the world, places I would never th think of, and it was a really, really good experience. So, you know, any time there was any press issue, we would handle it. And also, I got a, a great opportunity to um, brief the White House press corps. I remember thinking, I was talking to this uh, group of students the other day, and I was talking about skill sets, mm -hmm. right? You never know when they will come in handy. Mm -hmm. So when I was practicing law, I would be in court, and of course the judge would ask you whatever question you had to be able to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. The exact same skill set came in handy when I was at the White House. When you're at the podium, and it's a group about this size here, and press people would be answering you questions and you know yelling at you, and it was the exact same skill set. Uh, uh, so it's a good, great experience working in the White House. Let's, stay, let's stay with that for a second. Yeah. In, in my opinion, again, I said, yeah. I, you know, I, I thought that I needed uh, Hill was telling the truth and that, right. that, that, that he was lying. Um, however, there was a moment in those hearings mm -hmm. that changed everything. It seemed as if his nomination quest was going downhill. Mm -hmm. They took a break. I remember sitting in a hospital room. My mother mm. was in the hospital. Right. And I was just riveted to the TV screen. Right. And they walked back in. And Clarence Thomas took a very affirmative position, mm -hmm. not much that he does now. Right, right. He took a very affirmative position mm -hmm. to tell Joe Biden and a whole yes. lot of the other senators that it was a high-tech lynching. Mm -hmm. They were immobilized. No. Who came up with that strategy? 
I have no idea. <laughs> Raise can't, your right hand. Tell the truth, the whole truth, the, nothing but the truth. Here's the thing that's really beautiful about what I do, <clears throat> um, and it's with anything, is with clients and work that we do, we are very um, clear about confidentiality agreements and the work that we do. It's the reason why on the wonderful show that you guys see, every Thursday, which I'm hoping. Oh, we're going to talk I'm about I'm hoping we're not going to be missing that we, we tonight. Gonna talk, we're going to talk about scandal. There's uh, some people out here, and lots of folks out here wearing scandal t-shirts. Who watches the show? Who actually watches the show? Oh my God, that's great. That's awesome. Um, that, you know, we make sure that the, that the work that we do is the work that we do and remains, you know, with the client. And that's mm -hmm. important. Um, I'm talking about something that's dated. But oh, that it was, doesn't matter. It, it yeah. could be when I was ten. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't. I know. I'm just, I, no, what I'm about to do now is give props uh -huh. because what it did uh -huh. is it turned it around. That was a very bold position that Clarence Thomas took, and I think it is the position mm -hmm. that saved his nomination. And I've always wondered who did what, that, where mm -hmm. that came from, and knowing that I was going to have you here today thinking that it might finally be revealed. Uh, I am so sorry to disappoint you. I'm just all <laughs> broke up. Um, okay, so you have that. So my question, let me ask you this. Yes. The Judy Smith 2013, mm -hmm. would you have, would you vigorously have worked on a similar case with a similar individual as you did 22 years ago. Would you do that today? Well, let me tell you how we take cases. So what we do, and where's Chris? Is Chris here? Chris is in Chris the back someplace. Chris yeah. is here. So <clears throat> Chris has been with me for, uh, for 10 years. And when we get a call from a corporation, association, or individual, whoever it is, we really weigh whether we can assist the person whether we can help the person, we weigh the pros and cons of, of taking a, a case. Uh, can we be successful? There's a lot that, that goes into it. On the, the show, you know, when you guys see, um, it's usually uh, Abby, our investigator, put the client up on the board and, you know, you get ready yeah. and you go. Well, we do that, but in but in a, an initial way, which is trying to weigh all those kinds of things. We're going to take a break and yes. come back to all of that stuff. All right, okay. sounds good. Here on the Rock Newman Show. <laughs> Nelson Rolly Hafla Mandela is, of course, the first black president of South Africa. He is a towering figure in the history of humanity over the last century, and in many ways embodies the living spirit of the best of African traditions, blended with the resistance uh, of oppressed peoples to conditions of uh, everything from enslavement and colonialism to classism, sexism, and so forth. Mandela was born uh, in a small village. He eventually becomes a lawyer and joins the African National Congress Youth League in 1944. And from there, he undertakes a life of activism and struggle against apartheid, which uh, finds him being uh, convicted of uh, treason in, in prison in 1964 at Robben Island. And he stays in prison in one form or another for 27 years, uh, struggling the whole time at what they call Robben Island University, planning struggle. Mandela emerges from prison becomes the first elected black president of uh, South Africa. I, Nelson Hodesasa Mandela, do hereby swear to be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. So help me God. So the ability to maintain his character and his humility and at the same time understand that everything he did would be seen as representative of the struggle. It's a singular kind of genius, and I think that's what elevated Mandela uh, to the status that he occupied. For you to honor us is at the same time to rightfully honor yourself. For what has been attained in South Africa today is an achievement 
of the black people throughout the world. What we can learn from Mandela is that you keep hope in the faintest moments. And as you nurture hope and build common cause with people who share your hope, you will prevail. Folks, welcome back to The Rock Newman Show and our very special guest, Judy Smith. She's been called by Fortune 500 magazine the number one fixer in all of corporate America. A woman who has, again, lived a life that has a television show sort of fashioned after the life she's lived. You know, if I wasn't on TV, I would quote what Jersey Joe Walcott used to tell me. You gonna to tell say, me off a He No, I'm gonna oh, tell you right tell now. Oh, you tell me now, okay. if I wasn't on TV, I'd tell you. He said, that's pissing in high cotton. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, scandal. Let's go, no, let's first go to the book. Okay. Let's first All go right. to the book. Okay. I look in here and I see a couple of words. The first thing I just flipped through right here. Yes, ego, that's a big one. Ego. Yes, that's a big one. There have been some accusations thrown over this way. I don't know why but they've been thrown over here. Tell us about how, why you start off with ego. Yeah, I mean, what the book is about really is, because I've been doing for crisis for 20 years, I wanted to try to write a book that took some of that knowledge in and really tried to help everyday people. And so what I tried to do was look at some of the traits that I've come across that really can lead to crisis. Um, and there's a balance. So ego, for example. I think ego is great, just like ambition, because you, have to have that to succeed. Mm -hmm. I think though it can become bad in the sense that it can get out of balance. So for example, oh I don't know, someone like uh, Senator Edwards yeah. who was extremely ambitious, wanted to be president. Um, I think ego and ambition certainly led uh, him down a path that I'm guessing he probably wouldn't want to, you know, take again, due to the fact that, um, you know, the he got indicted, and tried. I mean, he did get off, and uh, the extra marital affair, all of those kinds of things. Um, it, it 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 started when you peel back the onion. I think from some of those traits. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Well, I mean, a ambition. Uh, it is great that we all are very ambition, but the question is, when does it get out of whack? So if you are, oh, let's say you're trying to get, we're just gonna pick on you. Pick on pick me. Pick on you, all right. Yeah. So you're trying to get a national TV show and a national radio show. Mm -hmm. And you're very ambitious with that, and that's a good thing. Sure. That's not bad. Right. But how far are you gonna go? What are you willing to do to get there? And the kinds of things that you might do to get there, if they're not the right things, can lead you to crisis and lead you to problems. Do you think that you learned anything about men mm. from representing Monica Lewinsky? I think I've learned a lot, um, not necessarily about uh, men solely, but about men and women and, and human nature and, and people. I mean, when you think about it, <clears throat> if someone calls us on a crisis, whether it's a corporation or an association or individual, it is at their worst time in their life. And it is, it, it is hard to sit down with a complete stranger and say, okay, yeah, I did have an affair with my secretary, and in fact, that's just not one affair, I had 10. That's hard to, to explain to someone who's a complete stranger. So, you know, in the, just to deviate to the show for a second, you know, part of what you see, I hope what, what people see in the show is that there is a, a, a woman, um, Olivia Pope, and, and, and Kerry Washington does an amazing job. And that person, I think, comes across as someone who is strong, who is, uh, fearless, who is um, at the top of her game and she's not afraid to 
run from that. That's okay for her. And it's someone who is passionate about what they do, but it's also someone who is non-judgmental. And that's one of the things that I've learned in, in going through all of these crises that I've been through, because the, the truth of the matter is, when you think about it, I mean, we all make mistakes. And, you know, quite frankly, we all screw up. The only difference probably between you and I is that, you know, we don't see them on national television and we don't read them in the paper. Um, but I am truly a, a, a big believer in uh, forgiveness and, 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 and second chances. As yeah. you were so tied at the hip mm -hmm. with Monica Lewinsky mm -hmm. for so long, one of the tragedies of that whole fiasco was the humiliation of um, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Do you have any particular thoughts about that as you were representing the lady that caused that pain? I, I will say this, um, not necessarily about the case, but I think period, that I think that when, um, whether you are on the woman side or the male side, that Look, whether you go through that in private or in public, that is a very tough thing to, to, to go through. Um, certainly, I think on the, the public side, obviously, there are more you know, eyes on it and, and more focus on it. I do think, though, that you see uh, a trend, in particular when men are in trouble, that the, the women now are making uh, decisions that are best for them and for their children and maybe not necessarily that is in the best interest of the politician. And I, and I think that's, that's, that's been a shift. Kobe Bryant mm -hmm. gets charged with rape mm -hmm. of a white lady mm -hmm. in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And big scandal. Mm -hmm. Kobe goes through that entire process where he had to acknowledge what he right. did. Yes. And his wife ended up getting a five million dollar ring and all that stuff. <laughs> I remember Dick Gregory saying his wife told him, "Why didn't he go do something <laughs> that would get her a five, a million, $5 million dollar ring?" Uh, he came out on the other side, yeah, sort of unscathed, with endorsements intact. Mm -hmm. Black man raping charged with raping and having to admit sexual contact with a white lady in Colorado, mm -hmm. goes through it and comes out smelling like a rose. Judy Smith was involved. How in the hell did that happen? <laughs> well, as I said, we're not talking about any cases here. <laughs> but look, I think in any crisis, there are a few things that are, are really important, and it is strategy, it's execution on that strategy, but it's also how you message. You know, message matters. It is um, uh, timing, it is knowing the landscape. I I'll, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Probably before the financial collapse in, in, in the country when everything was going to hell in a handbasket, as mm -hmm. we say, mm -hmm. uh, I would s probably say financial institutions would not anticipate being called up on the hill for congressional inquiries. Right. Now, if something happens, you need to assume that you're going to be called up. So <clears throat> that is sort of one element that you have to keep in mind when there is a, when there's a crisis. All right. Looks like we have another tweet, we got a tweet. from right. Durasco. Uh, was there a time in your life you could have used a fixer and when? Ooh, let's Let me see. make a prediction. She ain't going to answer that. Uh, you know what? This man is smart. <laughs> so you should probably go to the next tweet. Um, are you married? I am married. Two kids. As a matter of fact, I was uh, uh, talking to my uh, son, and I was teasing him because I um, uh, found out that he was using the show to pick up girls. <laughs> And uh, yes, 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 yes. He yes. needed a little fixing. Uh, you know, he said it's working. Let's <laughs> come back to the book. Let's yes. come back to the book. What do you want the end user here to walk away? First of all, yeah. 
I was blown away reading it. I mean, I wanted oh, to kind of skim you. through it. Yeah. I wanted to kind of skim through it so I could have a few things maybe yes. to talk about. Yeah. And I could literally could not well, put I could not put it down. Because what you really do talk about is you talk about the bad self and the good self. Yes. You identify our frailties, yeah. but how we can turn those frailties into into power mo modes and methods. Yes, no, absolutely. I mean, I just hope when people read it that it, it helps in some small way of identifying the issues and problems that we sometimes face and just look at it and make sure that you don't cross that balance. I mean, denial is a good example in there, you know, where sometimes, you know, you see this uh, quite often if people have a problem or an issue, whether it's shopping too much or drugs or drinking too much, uh, you have a tendency to deny that you have a that you have a problem that you need to address and if you don't deal with it up front then you're dealing with it on the back end and that's when it's so much more difficult and so much more harder i think let's talk about scandal scandal Whew. you All had right. a meeting Yes. You had a meeting scheduled with Shonda Rhimes and someone else. Yes, that I you see nothing secret here, huh? That 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 that, that, that was that you anticipated was going to be thirty minutes. At, at minimum, yes, yes. And it went three hours. Yeah, pretty much. Tell us about that first meeting. Yeah, I mean it was great. You know, I went in really just uh, talked who about sought my who book. Out? Um, my I have a book. I had a book agent, okay. and she said TV would be great. And I said, Oh God, people have been telling me about TV for twenty years. Don't want to do that. And mm -hmm. so uh, I find I found myself meeting with Chandra Rhymes, and I think probably on her schedule, you know, she had it down for fifteen thirty minutes. And yeah, I mean, we ended up talking for hours and just really talked about why I do what I do, what I like about it, how it works, and uh, I think we probably got into the parking lot after the meeting and she called up and said, I gotta do a show, I love it. What turned her on so much? Um, I think, you know, one of the things that she has said was that when you look at crisis, and this is, this is part of the reason why I love it, you can never get bored. There's so many crises that happen, and for her, oh my God, you know, you guys have seen it. One episode, you can have a airplane crash. The next one, there's a, you know, a political crisis. There's no shortage of crisis in this country. It, they happen every single minute of every single day, and so I think for her as a writer and as a producer, the the information and, and the stories that she can tell is they're, they're, they're endless. So she calls you somewhere not too long after the meeting was yes. over. Yes. I mean, was that a slap myself upside the head moment? Well, you know what? I, I will tell you, people that know me really, really well, Robin is in the audience, and I've known Robin, what, 30? Oh, God, 33 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't get, I, I'm not, I don't get excited. You know, I, I need proof of excitement. And so by that, it wasn't enough to say we're going to do a show. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to sign a contract. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to do the pilot. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to see commercials <laughs> that the show is coming. Mm -hmm. The day the show actually came on the first Thursday, I'm like, all right, show's on there. I'm excited now. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I'm just one of those sort of cautious cautious type people. I remember the first time I saw a commercial uh, for the show, I was watching the Oscars of all things. Mm -hmm. And I saw a commercial for the show. I'm like, oh my God, that's a commercial for the show. It's coming on. How scandal changed your life? Oh, um, it, it's amazing. I think um, probably one of the ways that, that it has changed is that more people know um, that a crisis manager exists, and um, and I think before people didn't. You know, sometimes when I go and talk to folks, they say, "Yeah, I just would see somebody lurking on the sides and not quite sure what they did." And um, so I think that you know that that's when, been a change. When, when you're trying to rhymes and the brain trust sit around, do you ever ponder women look at scandal? Yes, men do too. We and, oh yeah, no, I'm getting there. I'm okay. getting there. Right. Men look at scandal, All but right. kind of. 
I remember one night, the first yes. night I saw Shonda Rhimes. Yes. Wearing that like white coat. I think it was a Berber. Uh huh. They said. And oh, so Kerry Car Washington. Ca Car 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 Washington. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said Shonda. Yeah, Kerry Washington. Yes. Olivia Pope. Yes. Yes. Judy Smith. Yes. All right. Yes. That she was wearing that. And all the girls were talking about, all the women were talking about, man, where can I go buy that? And all the guys were talking about, did you see that bump? That was how that coat was showcasing that. So do you all ever sit around and talk about, you know, how you reach a different audience? Uh, <laughs> the bump, the style. No, oh, well, I, I will tell you, it's interesting how all that came about. <clears throat> When the, before the show started, I pulled together a collection of uh, pictures so they could see what I wear and, and, and how I dress. Mm -hmm. And white happens to be my favorite color. Mm -hmm. And so, hence the white on the show. And I'll tell you a funny story. Yesterday, I think, where was I? I think I was in New York yesterday. And uh, Chris and I were talking about this in the green room. And I had to stop at a, uh, at a bank, and I had on a black suit and my white coat. And I go in, you know, to a little bank, and I'm getting money out. And the woman stands beside me, and she said, ooh, that looks like an Olivia Pope coat. <laughs> and <clears throat> she pauses, and she takes a second look, and she said, Oh my God, it's you, it's you, it's you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just one of those sort of, you know, funny. Uh, Someone funny threatened moments. me with bodily harm yes. if I didn't get an answer to. Uh -uh. How did you develop the name Olivia Pope? Where did um, that come from? Yeah, I mean, that came from Shonda. You know, usually when you think about uh, character names, you have to go through a whole host of, you know, whether the real name is taken and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's Shonda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good Tell thing. me about Shonda. Oh, she's she's a terrific writer. She's an amazing person, and uh, and she's a good friend. And that's been one of the 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 great things uh, ab about the show that the three of us started uh, Carrie, not you know knowing each other, and it's been a it's been a it's been a great bond. Huck. Yeah. Huck. We love Huck, don't we? Yes. People love Huck. I know. I was I talking know. to I was talking to a gentleman this evening, yes, because we both watched the show, right, right, unapologetically. Yes, it was like you cannot take when Huck's on the screen. I mean, it is like drama. It is just yes. pure drama. Huck is no joke. Now I will say just to clarify that we work with a lot of investigators, yeah. but I don't really encourage them to, you know beat people to death to get information. <laughs> Just thought I'd straighten that out. I was going to ask you if you had a hook on your stand. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that we work with investigators, and then there is, uh, <laughs> there is those wonderful scenes that somebody uh, tweeted me about this. How many dead bodies have you removed? I'm like, we don't remove dead bodies from crime scenes. Every law enforcement agency would be after me. So, um, but no, I mean, <clears throat> the cast, I tell you what I think is great about the entire cast, is A, they're all amazing, and they're, they're wonderful actors, but the thing that's really great about them is that it's really a family there. Everybody is so uh, supportive and encouraging. They have fun doing what they do. Uh, it's, it's, it's just great. It's just a nice, easy uh, cast. Yeah. How do you describe Olivia Pope's daddy? That's an issue there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an issue there. This brother here, I don't know how to describe him. Uh, no. I consider myself a little bit of a wordsmith. Right. And I don't have the words to describe him. I need some help. Well, he's undescribable. He's mm. undescribable. Look, I think the thing, here's the thing I love about what Shonda does with characters, not just with her dad, is that <clears throat> she really defines them in a way that <clears throat> showcases that we are all, we're not perfect people. Now clearly he's to the extreme. But <clears throat> most of the characters that she, that she writes, they all have flaws about them. You know, they are, they are, not, they are not perfect people. And uh, I think that that is what attracts the, the, the viewers, part of certainly what attracts the, the viewers. And then of course it's, 
you know, scandal has so many twists and turns. For it. I remember I was um, speaking uh, somewhere, and um, we all made sure that we were all back in our rooms at 10 o'clock to, to watch it. And it was a group of very, you know, sophisticated, high-level executives, and everybody wanted to watch the show. And so it's probably at the same time we all get back in the room, individual rooms, and we turn on the set, and it's at 10 o'clock, <clears throat> and lo and behold, it's not on. It's not on. Oh. All of a sudden, all those lovely, sophisticated women <laughs> blowing my phone up on the hotel. Why didn't you tell us something else was going to preempt? I'm like, I forgot. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. The, it was so many calls came to my room. The, I felt so bad for the person at the front desk. They had to say, Miss Smith, do you want us to control? you want us to block? I said, no, no, I'll take them. So I think that night there was about 50 complaints, you know, that, that, I, that I forgot to tell them we preempted. Man. So people take the scandal watching very seriously. They do, they do, they and do. And I'm grateful for it. They I do, they do. I'm grateful for and, it, yes. And so, and boy, you want to talk about controversy. Controversy about this powerful African-American woman yes. sleeping with this president. president, sleeping with the white man. <laughs> and... All that goes in those dynamics yes. with his wife. Yes. She's no joke. The Not wife at is all. serious. Cold blooded. She cobra. is no joke. She is very serious. Yes. I mean I look, I, I, I think it's I think it's great. I think that um, in terms of the characters, people find it's just, you know, with Cyrus or anybody else on the show. Um, it is it is complicated. Y'all got something for everybody. Y'all oh, got yeah, something for messy. everybody. It's messy. Life is messy and complicated. And we got another tweet. Yeah. That's the same tweet we had before. I can was there see a that. time in your life you could have used the fixer? Oh yeah, that's the same tweet. When? Yeah. yeah. So maybe. Oh, see, I'm not. Maybe you're supposed to answer that. I, I don't think so. Okay. Is there one client in current news you would not take? Oh, God. Wow. Current client I wouldn't take. Let me think. Who's in the news here? Oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't take him. Who? Yeah, the mayor of Toronto. <laughs> yes. You know what? I posted on Facebook. Yes. And I said all crackheads are not black or skinny. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, think about it. So not only has he you know, admitted to using crack, uh, purchasing drugs, um, was videotaped, I think, threatening to kill someone. Uh, most of his power has been taken away. And yet, yet, we've tried a YouTube channel, I think, a radio show, a TV show. I mean, like, what's next, a comic book? I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. He didn't use Marion Barry's famous phrase. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. No, he did not. We're in Washington, D.C. You're from Washington, D.C., and you were involved. No. In the uh, case where Marion Barry was paraded into court and ultimately uh, found guilty of one, I think, of like 30 some charges. Yes. Yeah. What were you doing then? I was actually working at the U.S. Attorney's Office, which by the way, it was really great experience. You know, it's one of those uh, government jobs, and I remember it well because I was pausing. I said, oh, God, do I really want to take that job? You know, government, you make no money. Oh, it was such a great job. It was a good job <clears throat> because I wanted to be involved in uh, litigation, and the prosecutor's office is the best place to learn how to be a trial attorney. And uh, the role that I had was a good mixture of legal and, and press work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was a, it was a good experience for me. There are some dyed in the wool every Thursday night, wouldn't do anything else in the world, scandal fans out here. Yes. What do they, look, what do, what do they have to look forward to? Oh, my God. Well, let me just say this. Um, you won't get bored. <laughs> Uh, I met a woman the other day that said that she makes sure that she doesn't have to go to the restroom uh, unless there's a commercial because you can't miss a thing. 
Um, so, yes, I mean, more exciting episodes. Uh, we have romances brewing with, uh, with uh, Columbus, and, and, and we've got our first lady. Uh, just don't second guess her. <laughs> Never underestimate her. And our vice president, oh, my God. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. These yes. are hints, right? Yeah, oh, well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But I guess the most important thing, really, that, that, that I want to say um, to people in the audience and to everybody that is watching is uh, just really thank you. Thank you so much for uh, supporting this local girl from Northeast Washington. Uh, I appreciate you guys supporting it and and showing up for for me in ways that I couldn't even imagine. So so thank you, thank you really. Thank you so very very much thank for you. being on the Rock Newman Show. Thank you so much. And we'll close this out, folks. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the near future. Strange.